everyone let's start with the lecture on flag control and about the background row instruments first we'll talk about flag control as we all already talked about the flag it's a soft and a thin biophysm that consists of various microorganisms and the byproducts various inorganic and inorganic compounds the salivary proteins which are formed in the oral cavity and which are adhering to the teeth prosthesis and the other oral surfaces the dental flag can have its fate which create either dental caries or it may lead to periodontal disease now this attachment of the acquired pericle by a thin film of salivary proteins occurs in within some days and initially it is colonized by gram positive cocci and then the bacteria like villonella gram negative anaerobe actinomyces species the gram positive rods and certain capnophyta capnocytophyta species contribute to the early colonization of plaque whereas prevotella intermedia and filamentous fusobacterium species colonize the plaque between the first week and the third week as an anaerobic environment is established and then late colonization is done by porphyrovenous gingivalis treponema species during the end of third week and then plaque grows undisturbed now the regular plaque removal and prevention of its accumulation of the teeth and the adjacent surface is required if the level of plaque which maintains a healthy gingiva and doesn't progress into gingivitis and hence the plaque control is much more necessary if we talk about the periodontal therapy it is very critical in every phase that the plaque control be maintained talking about a classical study by leo and his colleagues they stated a very important hypothesis uh, hypothesis said that when the plaque was allowed to accumulate the gingivitis develops within 7 to 21 days but when the plaque was initiated that is the control was initiated this gingivitis was reversed again to clinical gingival health within one week only so it is very much important to know how this if plaque control is maintained we can convert the whole gingivitis into normal gingiva and hence periodontal disease progression can be stopped so that was a landmark study by low and his workers now let's see how this plaque control can be done it can be done majorly by two ways that is mechanical plaque control and chemical plaque control talking about the mechanical plaque control it has various aids like toothbrushes dentifrices and interdental cleaning aids like dental floss interdental brush and wooden tips talking about the brushes it has been very very old since how the tooth brushes were used in about 3500 to 3000 bc when the babylonians and egyptians made a brush by praying the end of a twig then Chinese were believed to have invented the first natural bristle toothbrush using pig hair and bamboo stick. These are how the ancient toothbrushes used to look alike. These are totally natural. Now these are the modern toothbrush designs which has been shown. It can be classified as based on the bristle which are present. It can be soft bristle brush that has about 0.007 inch. or about 0.2 mm of bristles this can be asked in an mcq a medium brush bristle has about 0.012 inch that is about 0.3 mm and hard brush bristle has about 0.014 inches that is about 0.4 mm in diameter talking about the ada specifications of a tooth brush in whole if we talk about the working part the brush should have the working end should be having a length of about 1 to 1.25 inches the width should be about 5 to 6 5 to 16 or 3 by 8 inches the surface area should be about 2.5 to 3.2 cm the number of a, a rows should be 2 to 4 and the number of tufts per row should be 5 to 12 the number of bristles should be about 80 to 85 per tuft Now talking about the single tufted brushes they are highly effective on the lingual surface of mandibular molars and premolars but the tongue often impedes a regular toothbrush and may provide access to furcation areas in the end 
in the isolated areas of depreciation in the posterior tooth. These are recommended as per the soft nylon bristle brush can effectively be used when properly it remains effective for a reasonable time and tends not to traumatize the gingiva or the root surface. The soft bristles are more flexible, clean beneath the gingival margin and reach further into the proximal tooth surfaces. The toothbrush needs to be replaced every 3-4 to four months. It can again be an MCQ. Importantly, we should note that there is no need for excessive force or vigorous brushing as it again may lead to gingival recession, acute gingival conditions or wedge shaped defects of cervical areas and painful ulcerations as well. So these are how the unhealthy or faulty tooth pressing techniques leads to problems like a wedge shaped recession or cervical defects, even we can see traumatic ulcers. Talking about the tooth brushing methods, the normal roll method, it can be vibratory method, circular, vertical and horizontal that is the scrub technique. The roll method includes the modified steelman technique, vibratory methods like steelman, charters and bars technique, the circular method that is bones technique, vertical method that is the leonard technique, the horizontal tooth brushing that includes scrub technique. Talking about those in details, the bash technique which is most recommended, it emphasizes a circular placement of the bristles which are adapted such that the bristle tips are on the gingival margin which reach up to the supragingival plaque and assess this subgingival plaque to a possible extent. Now how to use this technique? We place the head of a soft toothbrush parallel to the occlusal plane and then the bristles are placed at the gingival margin which creates a degree of about 45 degrees to the long axis of the tooth and then we exert a gently vibratory pressure using a short back and forth motions without dislodging the tip of the bristles. This is how the bash method is done. The angulation you can see about 45 degrees is made and we can make a back and forth motion only with the help of this. It should not be vigorous, it should be very gentle. Talking about the modified steelman technique, it is the placement of the sides of the bristles against the teeth and gingiva by moving the brush with soft back and forth strokes in a coronal direction. There it was opposite, here it is in towards the coronal direction. The indication of this is for cleaning the areas with progressive gingival recession and root exposure to prevent the further tissue destruction. It can be an MCQ. Remember that in case of recession we go for modified steelman technique. In case of periodontal surgery patients who have already undergone surgery, we go for charters technique. Now talking about this charter technique, the bristles can be pressed against the sides of the teeth and gingiva. The brush is moved with a short circular back and forth stroke. The indications as we stopped the patients who have undergone periodontal surgery or the individuals who have an open interdental space with missing papilla and exposed root surfaces. Talking about uh, advancement in toothbrushes, the power toothbrush were invented in 1939. It is mainly recommended in patients who individual who lack the motor skills, the hospitalized patients with whose the teeth cannot be cleaned or can be cleaned with the help of caregivers, special need patients and patients with orthodontic applications. We can see various variations in this electronic toothbrushes. The reciprocal of back and back motions can be seen. The circular and elliptical motions can be given or combination of both can be given. Talking about the dentary faces, they aid in cleaning and polishing the tooth surface. They appear in the forms of paste, powder and gel. The contents if we talk about the abrasive content are silica, aluminum, dicalcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. Detergent that is foaming action is done by sodium laurel phosphate, the thickness is provided by silica and gums, sweeteners are artificial sweeteners like saccharin, humectants are glycerin and sorbitol, the flavors can be mint and peppermint generally, the actives like fluorides, triclosan or stannous fluoride can be added as per the requirement of patient, either it can be an anti carious it can be desensitizing paste as per the requirement of manufacturer. So these are the dentifices. 
Talking about the interdental cleaning aids, the majority of dental and periodontal disease originate in the interproximal areas. The tissue destruction associated with the periodontal of often they leave a large open space between the teeth and expose root with anatomic concavities and percussions which are very difficult to clean and access without with the toothbrush. So we go for dental floss which is most widely recommended method for removing the proximal plaque. The types can be unwaxed, waxed, tepid floss, super floss or EPTFE floss which is an expanded PTFE floss. The method the floss is wrapped around each proximal surface and is activated with repeating up and down strokes. The normal floss which is taken at a length of about 12 inches and it is engaged within the index finger with both hands and it is taken into the interdental or the proximal spaces and the strokes are given in the vertical direction that is up and down and the floss should gently pass through the contact area and should not injure the interdental papilla. Nowadays there are floss with holders also which are coming. These are pre-designed floss. There are powered floss. These have single bristle that moves in a circular motion. Talking about the interdental brushes, they are cone shaped or cylindrical brush made of bristles mounted on a handle. The method is we insert it through the interproximal area and move back and forth between the teeth with short strokes for most efficient cleaning we select the diameter of brush such that it is slightly larger than the general embrasure to be cleaned so that it can easily adapt into that area and cleans whatever is present in the interproximal species talking about the wooden or the rubber tips these are used either with or without handle it assess an easier form the buckle surface for those tips without handles primarily in the anterior and the bicuspid areas. The disadvantage of it is, it is very hard to access the surface other than the facial surface. In the more anterior region of the mouth, it is only used if large gingival embrasure are present. So these are uh, how the rubber tips are seen. These are the wooden toothpicks which are present. Now these rubber tips are usually mounted on handles or on the ends of the toothbrushes. So this is how and it can be easily adapted on the proximal surface in the mouth. Talking, so these were all the mechanical aids. Now let's talk about the chemical plaque control. There are various oral ranges mainly consisting of fluorexidine or can be essential oil ranges, various disclosing agents as well. Talking about chlorexidine, the action of this is increased bacterial membrane permeability which is followed by a coagulation of cytoplasmic macromolecules and hence the substantivity is an ability of this substance to adhere to the structure which is to be released for a long time. So this is the main mechanism of action of chlorexidine. It is highly recommended. Talking about the dose, in higher dose it can be given for fortnightly that is 0.2% and if it is used in 0.12% it can be given for daily rains for about 14 days. In a patient who has undergone periodontal surgery or periodontal treatment. The side effects of these are brown discoloration of teeth, altered tense taste sensation for a longer duration of it is used and oral mucosal erosion as well. Apart from this there is one more disadvantage. If it is used for a very long uh, duration it may itself cause plaque formation because of accumulation of salts in the oral cavity. Talking about the oral rinse or essential oil, they can be thymol, eucalyptol, menthol. The action of this is by altering the bacterial cell wall, they work. Talking about the disclosing agents, a preparation in a liquid tablet or lozenge form, which are capable of staining the bacterial deposits on the surface of teeth, tongue and gingiva by its coloring properties. For example, we can say erythrosin, basic fushin or fluorosin. So let's talk about the summary of this plaque control. All the patients require the regular use of toothbrush at least twice a day. They should emphasize access to the general margins of all accessible tooth surface and extension as far onto the proximal surface as possible. The dental floss should be used in all interdental spaces. The interdental aids like interdental brush, wooden picks 
should be used with toothbrush and floss cannot adequately remove the plaque. The chemical plaque agents such as chlorhexidine and oils can be used as an adjective to mechanical methods and not on its own. This should be used along with the mechanical methods as well. The reinforcement of daily plaque control practices and routine visits to dental office for a longer term is the reason for success of plaque control therapy. So now let's talk about the periodontal instrumentations. We know that since various ancient times, we have used the periodontal treat, uh, instruments for the plaque control as well as for various surgical uses. Apart from this, there are instruments which can be designed to remove calculus, root planing, curating of the gingiva, and removal of the diseased tissue. So it can be classified broadly as periodontal probes, the explorers, the diagnostic instruments, the scaling, root planning and curatage instruments, the periodontal endoscope, and cleansing and polishing instruments. If we talk about the basic design of any instrument, it has a parts like the blade that is the working end. The blade is connected to the handle with the help of the shank. The shank can be either normal one, it can be extended or it can be a shorter shank as per the requirement. There are various shank available with different manufacturers. This is the handle part. It is most of these periodontal instruments are having the working edge on both the sides of the instrument. Now the optimal weight of any periodontal instrument should be less than 15 grams for better handling. The optimal diameter of periodontal instrument should not should be 10 mm, not more than that. And the handle texture should have a knurling pattern for better grip. The instrument balance should be produced so that we do not slip and damage the normal tissue. Talking about the shank design, there is simple shank and a complex shank. The simple shank it is bent in only one plane which is used for anterior teeth and the complex shank as we know in the instrument which are used for posterior teeth, they are bent in two or more plane. The flexibility of shank can be classified as Rigid shank which is larger in diameter and can withstand the pressure required to remove heavy calculus. Whereas flexible shank which is denser in diameter and enhance the tactile sensitivity. There are various kinds of mouth mirror which consist of small cylindrical metal shaft with a metal disc which is attached at the end of which it holds the mirror. There are various uses of these mouth mirrors. They can be used for direct vision to reflect the or retract the tissues for indirect vision, indirect illumination or trans illumination. Various sizes of mouth mirror are present. They can be from size 1 to 5. These are having the diameter of about 16 mm, 18 mm, 20 mm, 22 mm and 24 mm. Most commonly used mirrors what we use are size 4 and size 5. Talking about the periodontal probes which are used to locate, measure and mark the pockets and also to determine the course of pockets in various individuals. Apart from this, from the pockets we can also diagnose the percussion involvement with the help of neighbor's probe. Now what's the way of walking of a probe? It is a series of strokes along the junctional epithelium. How we walk the probe? to know about the defects or the depth of the pocket in various area. Each up and down stroke should be exactly 1 mm in length and the stroke should be very close together so can we can know about the exact depth of the defect. Talking about the adaptation and interproximal technique, it should be adapted along the long axis of the teeth whereas in case of defects or interproximal areas, we can keep the probe slightly angulated Talking about the generations of probe, there are five generations we will cover in a next picture. We will see how it is covered. The first generation probes include Williams probe, CPIT probe, UNC 15 probe, University of Michigan O probe, Goldman Fox probe, 
Clickman Pro, Merit, A and B and Neighbors Pro. Advantage of it is easily available and inexpensive. There is more tactile sensitivity. And even in the presence of sub general calculus, the Pro can be inserted within the little navigation by the operator and tip is rounded to avoid the tissue trauma. The color coding is there for easier and better identification of readings. Disadvantage of these are, these are heavy. The probing force is not controlled. Errors during the visualization can be seen in operator to operator. Talking about the second generation probe which includes true generation that is true pressure sensitive probe and the Apple probe. It is having the standardization of the probing forces so it is more comfortable to the patient. The disadvantage of this is the probe tip may pass beyond the junctional epithelium in an inflamed sites and reading may vary as per the operator's skills. Talking about the third generation probes, they include the Toronto Automated Probe, Florida Probe, Inter Probe and Foster Miller Probe. It is again standardized for probing forces. Errors in the reading the probe and transferring the data is minimized in this and the tactile sensitivity is decreased. So that is a disadvantage of this probe. This probe may pass beyond the junctional epithelium in inflamed area side and hence overestimation of the pocket depth can occur. Talking about the fourth generation probes, these are three dimensional probe and the sequential probe positions are measured. It is under development yet no more um, knowledge for this generation is available. Talking about the fifth generation probe, the ultrasonography probe, it is a non-invasive probe that provides the painless probing to the patient. It is very expensive and the operator needs to understand the image provided by the computer. It requires a great learning curve, so it is a technique sensitive. So these are all about the generations of probe. The explorer, these are used to locate the calculus deposits and carries to locate the subgenital deposits and carious areas to check the smoothness of the root surface after the root planing. The safer hope for normal explorer it is for the examination of dental caries and irregular margins of the restoration. The straight explorers for calculus detection in shallow pockets. The curved explorer they are for calculus detection in normal and shallow pockets. The pigtail and cowhorn calculus explorers they are for calculus detection in normal sulci and shallow pockets which extends deeper than the cervical third of the root. The urban type explorer and the 11 to type explorers. The tip is bent 90 degree to lower the shank. These are used in narrow and deep pockets. Talking about the sickle scalers, they are used to remove the supragenital calculus. The U1530 sickle scaler are larger in size, whereas jacket sickle scaler have a medium size. The Navy 2 posterior sickle scalers is used for removal of the subgenital calculus. Talking about the anterior and posterior scalers, the anterior scalers are Jacquet 3033, Goldman HF6 and H7. The posterior scalers are Jacquet 3132 and 3435. It should be adapted well. The tip Third should be adapted, angulation should be at about 60 to 70 degree and the stroke should always be short powerful pull stroke as per the definition. The stroke directions if we talk about the vertical stroke on the anterior and the mesial and distal of the posterior surface, the oblique stroke which are used for facial and lingual surface of posterior teeth and the horizontal stroke which are used at the line angles of the posterior teeth and midlines of the facial and lingual teeth. Talking about the whole scalar, which is used for scaling of ledges or rings of the calculus, the bend, the blade over here is bent at about 99 degree angle. Here you can see, and the cutting edge is framed by the junction of the flattened terminal surface and inner aspect of the blade. The cutting edge is beveled at about 45 degrees. It is maintaining two point contacts on a convex surface. Here you can see how the two point contacts are there. 
this is one surface contact and this is second point contact the whole scalars can be Macaulay's scalars the chisel scalar and pliers these are designed for the proximal surface in the teeth which are closely spaced to prevent the use of other scalars these are double ended instruments the one shank is curved and the other is straight so this is how the chisel is looking the straight cutting edges are beveled at about 45 degrees and the files are used to fracture or crush the larger calculus deposits these are the files for calculus removal not the bone ronger or that bone cutting files the curates which are for the removal of deep sunjava calculus root planing altered cementum and removal of the soft tissue lining the periodontal pocket it is finer than the thickal scalar it provides a good access to deep pockets the curates are of two types universal and the area specific universal can be used at any space or any place in the oral cavity on any surfaces where is talking about the area specific curates they are used in specified areas with one cutting edge is used and they are covered in two plane which is having an offset plate at an angulation of about 60 to 70 degree so these are the grassy curates which are 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 for anterior teeth 5 and 6 for anterior teeth and premolars 7 8 9 10 for facial and lingual surface of posteriors 11 12 for mesial posteriors and 13 14 for distal surface of posteriors now these are various extensions of the curates they can be mini 5 or after 5 curates the mini curates they increase the excess reduces trauma for example we can see more scalar the mini 5 curates are available in both finishing and the rigid designs the rigid mini 5 curates are recommended for calculus removal the more flexible shanked finishing mini 5 curates are they are appropriating for light scaling and deep locking in the periodontal maintenance patients with tighter pockets the mini 5 curates are available in all standard grassy numbers except the 910 talking about the grassy curvets they are another set of four mini bladed curates remember it is curvet not curate the sub 0 and 1 2 are for anterior teeth and premolars 11 12 are for posterior and mesial surfaces and 13 14 are for posterior distal surfaces the blade length of these instruments is 50% shorter than that of the conventional grassy curate and the blade has been curved slightly upward in such curvates. Talking about the Langeran and the mini Langer curates. These are the set of three instruments or curates. They combine the shank design of the standard grassy 5, 6, 11, 12 and 13, 14 curates with a universal blade which is honed at about 90 degrees rather than the offset blade of grassy curates at about 60 or 70 degrees. The Langer 5-6 curates adapts to the mesial and distal surface of the anterior teeth. The Langer 1-2 curates they adapts to the mesial and distal surface of the mandibular posterior teeth. Whereas the Langer 3-4 and four curate they adapts to the mesial and distal surface of the maxillary posterior teeth. Talking about the cuvitin furcation curate, it is a shallow half moon radius curate. This is shown which fits into the roof and floor of the furcation. The shanks of these are slightly curved for better access. Tips are available in two widths. The BL1 and the MD1 instruments are smaller and fine with a 0.9 mm blade width. The BL2 and the MD2 instruments are larger and wider with a 1.3 mm blade width. Plastic instruments which are used for implants we should remember that for implants we should never use stainless steel instruments rather plastic instruments are used which avoids the scaring and permanent damage in the implants they can be a columbia 4r 4l curate h6 h7 sickle scalar or 204 sickle scalar tip that is using the plastic tips the diamond files which are used for final finishing of the root surface they do not have cutting edges they are used to remove small embedded calculus on the root surface which is seen with endoscope the sonic instruments they are units which consist of end face that attach to the compressed airline the vibrations at the sonic tip range from 
2265 cps it provides less power for hercules removal than the ultrasonic units the ultrasonic instruments has a vibration of range from 2020000 to 45000 hertz the mag magnet there are two types of ultrasonic instruments which is having a magnetostructive vibrations and one is the piezoelectric in the magnetostructive the pattern of vibration is elliptical and all sides of the on the tip are working while it is active while in the piezoelectric the pattern of vibration is linear this can be an mcq remember this the two sides of the tip are most active while it is working the powered instrument tip design the standard diameter tips are larger in size with a shorter shank length and heavy deposits can be removed the smaller tips are 40% smaller than the diameter than the normal ones it is having longer shank length removed it removes lighter deposit of calculus mainly used in percussion area and for deep plucking now talking about sequence of how the use of tip is done the standard diameter tip is used for moderate to heavy calculus a straight slim diameter for light to moderate calculus up to 4 mm below the cj the curved slim diameter which is used to remove light to moderate calculus on post root surface that is posterior root greater than 4 mm below the cj talking about the dental endoscope it allows clear visualization of the deep subgenital pockets and in the forcation it consists of about 0.99 mm diameter which is usable fiber optic endoscope over which a fitted disposable sterile sheath is present the magnification range from 24x to 48 46x talking about the cleansing and polishing instruments they can be a set of curbber cups bristle brushes dental tape and air powder polishing mainly consisting of sodium bicarbonate the surgical instruments if we talk about they can be classified as excisional and incisional instruments the surgical curettes and sickles periosteal elevator surgical chisels files scissors hemostats and tissue forceps the excisional and incisional instruments are periodontal knives which can be kirkland knife and oberson knife the periodontal knives which are used in the interdental area especially are the merrifield knife or the oberson knife which are specifically triangular in shape the surgical blades which may be used are 15c and 15 which are used for normal oral surgery or the periodontal flap surgeries 12d which is having an uh, c shape curved which is used mainly in the mucogenital surgeries the surgical curettes and scalers which are used for removal of granulation tissue fibrous interdental tissue and tenacious subgenital deposits during the surgery the heavy curettes like pricard and kirkland curette and heavy scalers like ball scaler are used for surgeries the periosteal elevators they are used to reflect and move the flap after the incision has been made for flap surgery they can be the woodstone elevator or the pricard elevator the surgical chisel which are used for removal and reshaping of the bone it can be straight chisel wedge chisel or rosenbein chisel which are used in push motion and the back action chisels like rhodes chisel which is used with a pull motion the surgical files which can be of two types remember that it can be sugarman and sluger files the sugarman files are always having straight working end whereas in sluger there is a curved working end which is used interproximally to filing the bone surface and allows a push and pull motion for planing of the sharp bony edges talking about the tissue forceps and scissors which are used to hold the flap during the suturing used for positioning and replace or deplace, displace the flap after the flap has been reflected the scissors are used in periodontal surgery to remove the tags of the tissue during the hysterectomy to trim the margins of the flaps we can use castrovisio scissors as well to enlarge the incision in periodontal abscess and remove muscle attachments in mucogenital surgeries this is how the needle holder has we know the instrument sharpening that is the instrument sharpening if we need it can be done it is done along 
the linear cutting edge of the instrument to create a fine thin and a working instrument the sharpness can be evaluated by sight and touch it can be done with the help of sharpening stones which can be natural and artificial it can be mounted or unmounted and natural abrasive stones like indian and arkansan stones are present even we can produce synthetically like carborundum ruby and ceramic stones this is how the sharpening has been done if the instrument falls down without any uh, resistance it is considered that it is not sharp thus concluding it the advanced abilities of periodontal instruments and the instrument makers coupled with the integrity of these dental practitioners have provided us a present practitioner with multitude of instrument designs which is capable of reaching nearly every portion of the dentition some of the more efficient instruments from the past instrument sets have withstood the test for long term use and now they appear and reappear in newly created instrument sets and various technological as well as uh, mechanical advancements have been done day by day so that we can get more and more accessible instruments for our oral surgeries and generally for our advancement in dentistry so that's all for plaque control and periodontal instruments